Okay, welcome to Mr. Ridley's GCSE Engineering, and we're looking at modern technologies. So, for your GCSE Engineering coursework folder, you need to have investigated two new, the two different new technologies, and this is part of Unit Two, which is the controlled assessment of your GCSE Engineering coursework, which of course is sixty percent of your final GCSE. You need to look at the impact of a modern technology when engineering a product and on engineering products. So in the words of the exam board, they say you need to describe the advantages and disadvantages that the use of a new technology has brought to society, including environmental issues and sustainability, and they're quite important. So we're going to be having a look at that now. Now, first of all, we're going to look at LEDs. Why are we looking at LEDs? Well. First of all, think about what you know about LEDs and hopefully by the end of this um, clip you should understand why LED lighting is different to previous types of lighting. You should understand a little bit about the history. You should understand, know what improvements LED lighting offers and you should understand why new technology is important to engineers. Um, so we're looking first of all just at a history of lighting. So in the 19th century uh, humanity already had obviously artificial lighting from candles and things like that. Then obviously gas, um, but the, the transport of fuels like gas and paraffin had dangers of fire and suffocations and explosions. So electricity um, appeared and that appeared in the 19th century. So that was the, the first really improvement in lighting. Um, in 1907, British experimenter in Marconi Labs, Henry Joseph Round, noticed for the first time when a potential of 10 volts was applied to um, carborundum crystal, it emitted a yellowy, yellowy light. And in the same year, um, Oleg Vladimirovich Losev from Russia came to the same conclusion, and some people in America. So a lot of people around the world were saying if you put a small current on a crystal, you got um, a small light. Um, in 1962, Nick Holly, Holonyak Jr., employed at General Electric, developed the first LED, light-emitting diode, that emitted light in the visible part of the frequency range. It was a red LED. So there's the first, or well, one of the first red LEDs. At first, light-emitting diodes were expensive, $200 a piece, and because of that, they were only used as indicators in professional laboratory equipment, like this piece of equipment here. Here's a timeline showing the history of lighting, and you can see it moves along what we were talking about um, from candles, oil, gas. Um, and here, importantly for us, is the white LED, and we'll look at that in a while. Here's an overview of the development for LEDs. If you, if you want to watch this as something, this is quite good. It does have, um, there's a link here, um, it does have <coughs> quite complex electronics and physics, don't worry about that. but um, for seven minutes it's quite good and tells you the whole history. So find out a bit more about LEDs. LED is short for light emitting diode. An LED is not a light bulb and LEDs are arranged, available in a range of colours, meaning they emit light in that colour. They're not tinted by a filter. Okay, so how do light bulbs work? Well we're looking at a traditional light bulb here and a traditional light bulb has a coiled metal element. How does that work? Well, a current it goes across the, the element and that causes it to glow white hot. The glass bulb here is in a vacuum, otherwise the element would just burn up in the oxygen of the atmosphere. There's a problem though in that a large majority of the energy into the light bulb comes out as heat. So a large proportion of the energy comes in the light bulb is it comes out as heat, not light. LEDs don't work like light bulbs. It's quite complex, there's quite some complex physics going on here, but a simple model is to say that the electrons travel from one, which is the anode, uh, they travel from a, a negative to positive, I think it's that way, it might be that way, and uh, it jump a gap and some escape as light. Okay, some escape as light particles or light beams. Um, LEDs are available in many different sizes. The one we're going to use in our project is a 5mm diameter, but there's other different types. 
um, there's uh, different sizes, there's LED arrays, all kinds of LEDs, and there's more available now than these ones here. Um, <clears throat> larger output LEDs do generate heat. This is an example of a star LED, and it is uh, they're surface mounted onto a aluminium. This is a piece of aluminium, and you can see here the thickness of the aluminium. And this acts as what they call a heat sink, which allows the LEDs to dissipate some of the heat generated. The heat from an LED is generally um, concentrated at the back of the LED, and this just allows it to move away to keep the LED running cooler. Many new cars have LED tail lights. Why do you think this is an advantage? Can you think of reasons why modern car manufacturers, here's an Audi, with LED tail lights? Well, they last longer than light bulbs. They use less energy. And quite importantly, they light up instantly, saving a, a fraction of a second in braking times. So all those are advantages of LEDs. We'll look at that again in a minute. So what are the advantages that LEDs have brought to society and what about the future? Because we need to comment on that. Okay, so we can say that 17%, if you look at this chart here, this shows um, energy usage in the UK and it shows that 17% here of home electricity or energy use is lighting. So obviously that makes quite an importance if we can we can save that power um, we can save energy there then that's quite a big bit of the UK's total energy here's a phenomenon called Hetz's law and this is a forecast about the steady improvement over many years of LEDs um, uh, this guy Hetz just basically said that the every decade the cost uh, of useful light emitted uh, falls by a factor of 10 and the amount uh, sorry the the cost falls by a factor of 10 and the amount of light generated per LED package increases by a factor of 10. So you can see we've got cost going down and we've got light energy going up and you can see that's going up quite quickly. So if we project that over the, into the future, the amount of light for the cost of energy is, is increasing all the time. Really important for the future of LEDs. And there's something here that basically says that by uh, 2020 and this is Cree one of the LED manufacturers and they've just basically said that that um, by 2020 most lighting 70% of lighting in in the lighting market will be LEDs they will just take over and obviously just go to almost 100% so it's important for designers and engineers to embrace or um, new or advancing technology Here's an example of that, and this is Audi, the German car manufacturer, and they now offer LED headlamps as an option on the top of the the, the top of the range uh, A8 saloon car. And these they can build in lots of features, switching and dipping that can act very very quickly. So that's an option on top of the range cars now. Um, as engineers, you should be aware of the future potential of LEDs as they become brighter and more efficient and the, the possibilities for future applications are endless. Now, this is something you could look at and perhaps um, research and add into, and in, and into your, your work is what, are the, what do you think the future could be. Okay, so thank you for watching Mr. Ridley's GCS Engineering and good luck with your assignment.